How do people learn in organizations? This is the hot topic and question that uh, a lot of the corporates are asking these days. So when we're looking at learning inside organizations and what really makes that learning stick, what we typically see these days, of course, Yvonne, right, is the traditional approach to training where you put people in the room one or two days. There's a lot of debate, discussion kind of that goes on. There's some group work, team building activities, et cetera, right? But what's really measured, the only thing that's really measured out of these is how popular was the trainer? Did the people enjoy it? But what about the learning? What about the impact of what they have actually learned? And this is something we want to discuss today in this episode is to look at how can we apply strategies to learning in a way that sticks, in a way that our brain uh, receives the learning in a more positive way, right? So in a way that we use research and science that we get from uh, behavioral change, neuroscience, positive psychology, to create those opportunities for people to learn in a way that is actually effective. Elena, beyond just corporate learning, so we're always looking for ways to self-develop our, uh, ourselves. So this, the, the, the challenge very often is that the proof that we have learned something is because we have changed, we have broken, in fact, old habits and we have replaced it with new habits. And this is a little bit difficult for the brain, in fact, to, dig to digest. In fact, any change produces anxiety, stress for the brain. And it's almost like it's frozen. There is fear, in fact, for or resistance for, for change. Um, the brain learns the best when an experience engages them in the hippocampus. So the hippocampus is, a, is, is an area inside of, of the full brain, really in the middle a region of the brain that is active when new information is embedded into the long-term memory. In fact, it's not something like we learn in, in, in a quick way. No, it stays with us. But in order to put it there, what we have to do is to create routines. Uh, and in fact, the hippocampus activates when four conditions are met. There should be attention, there should be generation, there should be emotions, and there should be a spacing. So let me tell you a little bit more about these four uh, different uh, pillars. So attention is that the brain has the principles that when we are asked to pay attention to any one thing for longer than 15 or 20 minutes is super, super di difficult. Um, so we can always rely in a maximum of 20 minutes of sustained attention. After that, we, we don't retain anything and we're thinking about something else. So whenever we are learning, individually or in corporate trainings, we should, we should make it possible so that the, the essential part of the learning is concentrated in a very short time frame. That's one of the reasons, by the way, why long-term, <clears throat> long trainings do not work. The other thing to consider is about generation. Generation is a process of creating your own connections to new ideas. So remember the thing that I was telling you about the hippocampus. So we need to, to put whatever we learn, not in the surface of our brain, but in a long-term memory. So we need to be able to connect with uh, ideas, with experiences that we have ourselves to extrapolate whatever the trainer or whatever the book is telling us into something that is specific for us so that we create new connections so that this part of the knowledge goes and is embedded in a long-term mem memory. Another thing that helps, in fact, to, uh, for this long-term memory is to explain things to others. So if you have learned something new, why don't you tell it to your wife, to your partner, to, to your friend, so that <clears throat> this will ensure that it is stored in a, in a long-term memory. The third thing about <clears throat> this model is about emotions. So whenever we can anchor emotions with the new learning, and how can we generate emotions? So with a trainer, it is often, we are talking about positive reinforcement, encouragement, uh, clapping, uh, something that is happening that makes us very often happy. Now, when we are learning by, our, by, by ourselves, the important thing in order to generate emotion is to imagine, imagine the situation with colors, with emotions, where you are part of the scene. It's a little bit like having a little movie that you have in your head while you are learning. Imagining is something that will help you to anchor it with emotions, to relate it to you and put it in this long-term memory. <clears throat> the, 
The other thing, and the last thing, in fact, is about spacing. Studies show that single session trainings yield very little long-term retentions. So what is happening is that spacing the knowledge into small little chunks make it possible to have a time to digest the new knowledge, to extrapolate it to our personal situation, and to finally anchor it there in that long-term memory that, uh, that we have been discussing. Funny enough, <clears throat> when you ask the questions uh, to people who have been in training, corporate trainings, after six days, 75% of the people have forgotten what the training was about. And the, the, the main cause it is being that it doesn't follow the pattern of how our brain processes change, new behaviors, uh, learning acquisition. So that's one of the, uh, the, the sad parts about the, our life in corporates. <laughs> yes, and you know, it's interesting because in one aspect, we need to consider how the brain learns and how do how what can organizations do better, but also there are attributes from an individual perspective. And when we look at the people that are like most effective and productive and really driven in their lives and careers, there's usually three things that they typically, um, the attributes that they that they have, one of them is the aspirations. So really, the the sort of uh, wanting to make things done, right? So having the the, the sort of the dream of, of who you can be, the potential you can reach to be aspired, to be something more. So what can we do better? What can we do more, right? And then another part of it is, of course, the curiosity. What, you know, what are the different ways for me to do this? How can I be most effective? So being curious continuously about being better, being more productive, time management, taking care of yourself, whatever it may be from an individual perspective, right? And then the final piece is vulnerability. So even if you aspire to do something and you're sort of curious, there are going to come a time where you might fail at something. And that's the vulnerability piece is that being okay with trying things, even if you fail to say, this is fine, let me learn from this and move forward. So, you know, when you look at all these, the aspiration that it takes to reach something, the curiosity to keep you going and the vulnerability to check in from time to time and make it okay for you to fail. I think that if in as individuals, we can have these three attributes and what we've known from the many success stories out there, that is what makes you also as an individual wanting to learn, wanting to progress and to develop and to take your own uh, ownership and accountability for your own learning as well.